Hey guys, so today it's time again for a guide video and uh, some of you have uh, asked me to do a Poison Rogue guide uh, update and I'm glad that I waited a few days until the BlizzCon so we got some new information um, regarding the future of Diablo 4 and especially Season 2 and Today um, there will be a new patch and this patch will um, bring us some new unique rings. And so I <clears throat> I will show you first my current Poison Rogue, which I was also playing in my gameplay video that I already uploaded on my channel. And then I want to show you some different variations of this build. And I will also make a, show you a version um, which I will use um, for the future content in season two, which I will mention in a second, and also which will feature, which will be featuring the new unique rings. So if you didn't know, um, this patch will bring this unique rings, which are inspired by season one of Diablo Four. So um, they, you could call them the malignant rings because they have this malignant powers that um, you used to uh, have in season one. So each class gets one unique ring with one malignant hard power, kind of. And for Rogue, um, we have access again to the Taunt Trap, uh, or Decoy Trap, how it's called. So every time you use a subterfuge skill, so for example Poison Trap, we will leave down another Decoy Trap, which will immediately start to taunt enemies around us. and. If the effect is the same as in Season 1, they will also taunt um, very distant enemies. So basically the entire screen um, will get will attack this trap instead of you for, I think, 3 seconds. And this is a very powerful defensive tool that Rogue will have access for. And I believe that this will help us, especially in the um, future endgame content. So they also... Uh, mentioned that in December, I think December f the 5th or something, early December, there will be a new endgame dungeon mode. So this will be a very hard dungeon. Um, I think they al also already um, uh, leaked that the first dungeon, like the tier, the first tier of this new endgame dungeon will start at level monster level 155. So right now you can see in the background gameplay of tier 100 dungeon and they have monster level 154 and the new dungeons will start at 155. So it's like t nightmare tier 101 kind of you can say. And then the maximum tier will be 25. So it will go up to about monster level 180 or something. So it will be very challenging, I believe. So especially with this unique ring, I think it... Uh, this ring will help the rogue class to um, basically survive in this high endgame content. Um, but I will show you this version later and like, yeah, this I will also make a video um, when time, like when the new dungeon comes out and then I will also make maybe make a little update. But this is the plan for today. So right now you can see my current version of Poison Rogue. This is, um, I call it the non-crit version because I'm just playing without any crit chance in my gear so I'm focusing completely on lucky hit chance and I'm doing this uh, for basically two reasons so first reason is um, the more lucky hit chance I have the more likely I am to proc this to uh, toxic pools that you can say um, I spawn them sometimes on the ground so um, this is the bursting venoms aspect I think this the Poison Rogue archetype is not nothing new, so most of you guys are probably familiar with it. So we want to proc this um, here. I died too much <laughs> poison from the enemies. Uh, so um, damage. I mean, uh, you want to proc this uh, poison pool because then you can spam your poison imbuement on your twisting blades, and this is kind of the b most the biggest damage source for the rogue so we scale our damage with poison imbuement and twisting blades in combination and yeah but uh, also in season two we got a new unique ring which can drop by from duriel uh, it's called i think x rail ring um, and this ring will also proc from time to time some explosions so like poison explosions and they also can deal quite some damage 
Um, but since I'm not focusing on crit chance, this damage is not that important as the poison damage from my poison imbuement for this build. Um, but the big advantage is that you can play with kind of very cheap gear. So you don't need critical strike chance on your gear and this makes it a lot easier to get some good gear for this build. So you're only focusing on lucky hit chance. But uh, yeah, you were also casting Puncture way more often than last season. Because also Puncture can proc this Poison Explosions, which even if it's not the biggest damage like I just mentioned, it's still enough to clear most of the like usual mobs. So for Elites maybe it will not be enough, but for the normal uh, mon mobs it's uh, just uh, fine most of the times. And also since we have s such a high attack speed with the new Empiric Powers, um, we can spam our puncture quite insanely fast and this will also proc our um, toxic uh, venoms aspect quite um, quite often and quite easy easily so um yeah we are playing punk we're casting puncture a lot of the time and since and then uh, when I proc my first um, pool my first toxic pool then I start um, casting uh, also my poison imbument and twisting blades. So this is like the ideal rotation, very simple, very easy. Then I also am using dash to daze enemies, I'm playing with the quickening fog aspect. So I dash in my enemies, they get dazed by a smoke grenade, they also get 25% more damage. And shadow step is just like a lifesaver if I get CC'd, because I'm not playing with metamorphosis. And yeah, very... Very simple skill rotation. I also, of course, lay down my poison trap when I fight elite uh, mobs, so they also get knocked down, and I have some more, um, yeah, defensive, uh, yeah, defensive shell kind of. So yeah, you can see. Um, of course, sometimes it happens that you might die. So I also died one time here, but um, it's still you're still quite tanky if you have enough armor. So. The goal is always to reach about 13 to 14,000 armor. So you, like, together with the disobedience aspect, um, so you reach this maximum armor cap for the Nightman 100 dungeon. And here I'm fighting the boss. I'm also kind of doing the same. I'm only casting Puncture right now um, because I want to proc my Toxic Venoms, like, just like how I did now. So you can see this green, this poison pool. <laughs> it means I proc my aspect and then I start also... Um, spamming my twisting blades with a poison imbuement and this time it uh, kind of needed i needed more time to proc it but usually it goes much faster and then the boss melts down pretty uh, quickly actually okay so now i want to um, show you this build on my planner and like i mentioned i have Four, actually, actually three different versions. One is a starting point for your Paragon board. I can also show you, but um, yeah, I have basically three different, three different versions for this build. So the skills, I don't think I need to explain very much. It's very basic stuff actually. So twisting blades, rogue um, with the best skills and passives for damage. And here I'm playing with mixed poison imbuement since I have no critical strike chance at all, so here I'm focusing on yeah, mixed poison movement for my further poison damage. And you can see I'm quite heavily invested into lucky hit proc chance here on my skills. And of course I'm playing with close quarters combat because this is a massive damage boost in Season 2. So you can uh, take a look at the skills by yourself, like I will put the planner as always in the description. So yeah, nothing too special here. Um, some gear that is highly recommended is Penitent Griefs. So Penitent Griefs is um, like your most, your best unique item that you want to find as early as possible. But I think the rest of the gear is kind of optional. So here, for example, this new uh, ring, which I mentioned. So here I can deal up to about 40k poison AoE damage explosions. So also with a very high lucky chance of 50%. With this build, with all my gear, I'm reaching about more than 60% lucky chance on my Twisting Blades, I believe. So this will 
proc very often, but you don't need it really to start this build. So this is just an end game addition after you farm Duril, like you can farm Duril at level 80. Um, I have a video for that if you have problems with killing Duril about level 80. Then also Ashira's Kanjar is also nice to have, but it's not mandatory or something. It's just a nice addition for this build because there's luck hit chance and uh, attack speed bonus is very nice. And Call of the Nameless is a very good unique helmet in Season 2, so they have changed some affixes and it's a very good helmet for this build, especially because we get 25% multiplicative luck hit chance increase and um, we really want to increase our luck hit chance as I mentioned. So, yeah, but um, only Penitent Griefs uh, are uniques that I can highly recommend you getting as early as possible. And the rest of them, basically these two uh, items here, you can just get them by farming Duriel. So before that, it's not likely that you will find these items. And Ashira's Kanja you get from Zero, I believe. Um, okay, so as always on our weapons, uh, what we want all the time for Rogue is Dexterity and Damage versus Crowd Controlled. And then also all stats, so these three affixes are uh, key affixes and the last affix is not that important, it can be something like damage to close enemies or damage to vulnerable enemies. Um, the most important ones are the three, the first three I mentioned. Um, then on the ring, like this is the non-crit version, so I'm playing without crit chance, I just want lucky chance and maximum life and damage to crowd control. Then also resource generation is kind of good uh, ethics. And on our defensive gear, yeah, you want as always uh, total armor. This is very important for higher um, content. Um, so total armor and then some decent damage reduction stats and something like life is always a good idea. And on the gloves, I'm also playing with a lot of as much lucky chance as I can get and twisting blades, ranks and attack speed. So kind of basic stuff here for the rogue on the amulet, also movement speed, all ranks, cooldown and energy cost. So nothing special here. Um, I can also give you a quick look at my paragon board, very quick, so exploit glyph to make enemies vulnerable, then control glyph um, for damage to crowd controlled, as mul damage multiplier, cheap shot, eldritch bounty, Versatility for more damage and armor, exploit weakness, um, node for more damage. And here I have efficacy glyph for also more damage and maximum life. Okay, so very optimized, nice paragon. But now I want to focus on the different versions of this uh, rogue build. So this is like the version I can recommend you if you're starting with this build, since it's, um, like I mentioned, um, it's easier to find gear that suits you because you're not, uh, you don't need critical strike chance. But since you are f you progress further into the end game, if you find some decent gear with critical strike chance on your ring and on your gloves, then I can recommend you switching to the critical strike version of this build, so the crit version. So here on the gloves we have up to 12% critical strike chance and on the ring up to 7.5 critical strike chance. And then also if we play this version, if we commit to go full on uh, critical strike chance, we also make some minor changes here. So we replace second wind with trap mastery, so we get additional 12% critical strike chance after we um, proc, uh, after we use, activate our poison trap. And so this will give us additional critical strike chance and then we should reach something about 46%, I believe. Uh, so something slightly less than 50% critical strike chance. So why do we do this? We also change mixed poison imbuement with blended poison imbuement. This will deal on average uh, more damage. So if we have critical strike chance, then blended poison imbuement is always better than mixed poison imbuement. So this is one small reason we are dealing a bit more poison damage and the biggest the, another big reason why we are uh, going for crits chance is uh, if we are proccing our x fell ring very often because we have very high lucky hit chance anyways um, then this explosion will like you will crit more obviously with this ex poison explosions if you have higher crit chance and then this poison explosions can also deal about 
one or two million damage. And this is kind of huge because it's uh, AoE damage, so it has quite big um, explosion radius. So um, it's just more likely that this, that this ring will deal a big amount of damage also additional to your poison imbuement. So this is basically the reason we are just increasing our damage. But um, yeah, like I said, uh, you just you need more expensive gear and like for example, these gloves are very hard to find. So you need gloves with twisting blades, ranks, critical strike chance very high, lock hit chance very high, and also attack speed optimal, an optimal case. So it just takes you more time to find such gear. But since you find it, I would recommend you this version. And also here, the Paragon board, I think I made here some change. So here you can also play with a Turf Glyph for additional damage reduction. So I think uh, this is my newest inter iteration of the Paragon board. Um, so Deadly Ambush with Turf is also a nice combination for some defensive properties here. Okay, um, now I want to talk about the my newest version which i already prepared for the future content so like i mentioned um there will be a new dungeon and this will be a very difficult dungeon and this is basically what you can do um f like if you uh, have nothing to do in december and you want something to do with your level 100 character then you will most likely try to grind in this dungeon because you will also level a very powerful glyph there and it's basically the biggest challenge in the game since release. So if you want to participate into this content with Rogue, so with Poison Rogue for example, then I have made this build for, and also I will try to use this build to um, get through this endgame content. So here I have simulated the Malignant Ring. Um, during BlizzCon they already have revealed um, this uh, unique rings and here you can see they have very nice affixes and this is the effect, the power that I already mentioned. So you leave a decoy trap and this will taunt enemies for three seconds. So very powerful defensive tool. This basically means that you will get um, immortal for three seconds. So all the enemies will not attack you. And that's why I think this is a very nice addition for this very challenging um, dungeons. So this is one thing that I swapped. So I swapped a ring with, I will swap this ring with the malignant ring. You can find these rings, by the way, at Varshan. So you should save your um, Varshan materials um, for um, when the patch comes live. Um, and then what I needed to do, because here I'm losing um, legendary aspect. So oh, I just realized I didn't mention the aspects yet. So um, we have this poison package, so we have this bursting venoms aspect, we have the blade dancers aspect and the pestilent points aspect. So these three aspects are kind of your poison imbuement package. Um, then you have the unique items that I already mentioned. On your weapon, on your two-handed weapon, you also, also uh, always want aspect of corruption. This is the best aspect uh, to put on your two-handed weapon, so on your uh, crossbow. And on your uh, gloves, like I mentioned, we are playing with Quickening Fog, so we are dropping smoke grenades automatically at the end of dash. And then we want Disobedience and Might on our defensive gear. So this is the regular setup. And then with um, the Malignant Immortal version of this build, I needed to... I'm replacing the ring, so I need to remove Quickening Fog from my gloves and then put the pestilent points on the gloves instead because we need this three aspects here so these three aspects are crucial for this build and this build won't work without them so yeah that's why we needed we are losing the quickening fog aspect so we are not playing with smoke grenades anymore that's why we needed to make some adjustments in the skill tree so i'm removing smoke grenade from the skill bar um, I'm also removing Subverting Poison Trap and then I have three more points to spend and I put them here into Siphoning Strikes because uh, I believe this dungeon, like I said, will be very challenging so another, an additional source of healing will be very helpful, I believe especially if we have some critical strike chance uh, to proc this Siphoning Strikes Speaking of healing, um, I also should mention my Vampiric Powers quickly so um, this is my regular setup for Poison Rogue. 
I'm playing with flowing veins and a cursed touch. So this combination um, gives me 60% more damage over time, multiplicative damage. So very strong for poison, uh, yeah, for dot builds, damage over time builds, and poison is damage over time. Then Ravenous gives me about 60% attack speed bonus, so very powerful offensive uh, power. And my two defensive powers are Undying and Resilience. Resilience will be crucial, especially in the new endgame dungeon, since this will give you up to 40% damage reduction based on your life, so this is huge. Um, and Undying, uh, so I'm using Undying mostly for my heals because I have such a high attack speed, so I'm casting a lot of punctures per second. This will heal me very much um, with that. So uh, Undying, very good for healing, but I believe uh, Siphoning Strikes is also needed in the higher uh, endgame dungeon. So, uh, that will be released. So yeah, these are the some changes I made in the skill tree for this build. So now I showed you my vampiric powers and showed you my um, aspects. So here, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm changing quickening fog. I'm replacing it with pestilent points because of the ring, and all of the other aspects stay the same. And another change that I did for this build is I replaced energy cost reduction on my amulet for total armor. So in this setup we have three uh, items with total armor um, on as affixes. And I think this is very crucial also for this endgame dungeon because if the monsters are level 180 then you will need, I don't know how much, but you will need a lot of armor. So maybe over 17,000 armor or something like that. And you can see in my defensive stats so if I compare, for example, my crit version, here I have 11,000 armor without disobedience, and I get 1,000, uh, about 1,400 armor from my Paragon board. And on my Malignant uh, version, I'm reaching about 14,000 armor, and my Paragon board gives me 1,800 armor. So you can see I'm I'm focusing a lot on armor in this version. Because I think armor, um, armor and damage reduction will be uh, very crucial for surviving in this new endgame. So if we take a look at my Paragon board, I made some small changes here. Here I put the Fixy Glyph in the starting board because I want to get some additional armor bonus. Um, then uh, this stays the same. I also have control on my Cheap Shot board. Also, this stays the same, Eldritch Bounty for more damage and poison resistance. And then here, I switch Versatility Glyph for Diminish. So this glyph gives me additional 10% physical damage reduction. And also some armor bonus. And then here also Turf for 10% damage reduction. Um, here I'm taking a Spring Loaded Rare Note because I need... Um, it's better to fasten up my um, casting time for Poison Trap, since my Poison Trap is also a big survival, uh, survival tool for me, since this will proc my Decoy Trap from the Malignant Ring. And here I put Exploit Glyph, but on Lairena's Instinct for this build, because he also gets some additional resistance to all elements, and I need this node to max out my resistances. Um, so I think it's also crucial to be capped at your resistances. Um, so yeah, this is these are some slight changes I made here. So basically I'm reducing a bit of damage. I think damage will not be a problem, but instead I'm pushing um, towards more defensive uh, abilities. So I'm trying to make the rogue as tanky as possible. And yeah, like I mentioned, I'm reaching about 14k armor without disobedience. With disobedience, I will further increase it by 66%. So I'm trying to reach about 17, 18,000 armor or something like that. Um, I have 16,000 life. So yeah, I think this is one of the tankiest rogue builds that you can go for, with poison at least. So you can use this build if you also want to try this new endgame dungeons. Um, all right, so yeah, that's it basically. I gave you here three different versions. 
Uh, and last I want to mention here, I have a start Paragon version. So this is for leveling up. So if you reach level 50 or 60, you can start, uh, you can use this board as an inspiration for a starting point. So because your glyphs are level one, um, you need to change a bit uh, here and there. So here we start with the control glyph and the starting board. And then we put the exploit glyph, which you want to activate as quickly as possible. We put it in the cheap shot board because here we can activate it if it's level one. And then yeah, the rest stays kind of the same. Also here the versatility glyph. So yeah, this you can use this as your starting point. And then if you reach level 100 or you're close to reach to reaching level 100, you can switch to one of these three versions here. And yeah, I'm very excited about uh, this malignant version. So the patch will go live today. So um, I wish you good luck with farming the malignant rings. I hope I didn't forget anything important. Um, write me a feedback in the comments if you like this build, if you have any further questions. And I guess I see you in the next videos and have a nice day. Bye bye.